And uh, and uh, by the way, Jody, if they don't win that opener in Atlanta, they could start 0 and 9. <laughs> you look at that schedule. Whoa. I mean, Whoa. if they don't win that opener, they are in trouble. Yeah, but well. Oh we, and nine, we won't know. you got them going oh and nine. Gross. If they don't win the opener, yeah, I can see this snowball. <laughs> oh but, man! But look at. Here, and I think we got Bob Groats on the line. Bob, are you there? Yeah. Can hey, you got him. him. We got him. So we'll we'll talk hey. about that. We'll put that in the holster, Jody, because that's important. It's yeah, the, the internet, internet out here. I'm I'm in Westchester. It's a yeah. little bit slow, yeah. They are. Westchester. You go out to Westchester. You're on the you're the on the border. You're of, in the boonies. What the yeah. hell? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, you're I want to say the- I want to say it's an honor to be on this show and thanks for the opportunity, guys. This is a phenomenal show. <laughs> I knew it was a, coming. A great show. A I knew it was show. coming. Now, now, I, now I, I hate to do it. I don't. I don't want to be the jerk of the show, but I'm well suited for it. He's lying through his teeth. Uh, if he no. can't get the internet out where he's living in the boonies of Westchester, he sure as hell is not watching Birds 365. Yeah. Well, what Bob was doing there, Bob was doing Nick Sirianni, Jody. He was oh. he, he was blowing smoke up. Are you? That's a phenomenal question, Jody. Oh. That's a good. That's a good question. That's a great question. I'm not going to answer it right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on what type of softball, <laughs> if you give him the biggest softball possible, you get phenomenal. phenomenal. You give him just an average softball, you get great. And you give him a run of the mill, you know, two one fastball, you get good. Bob Gross, Nick Sirianni, yeah. your first impressions with Nick. Yeah, I mean, a, a nice guy, a ton of energy, um, and this, believe, trust me, I mean, this, just because he won't answer questions now doesn't mean that he can't coach, but uh, it, it sure seems to me like he's a little bit overwhelmed and trying to figure everything out, and you look at that coaching staff, and man, they are young. <laughs> These guys are really young, and look at the NFC East alone, and I've, I've spoken with you about this before, John. Every one of every team in the NFC East, just the NFC East, and the majority of teams, a simple majority in football, have at least a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator who has been a head coach in the NFL. This yeah. guy doesn't have that. So, and I don't know whether they tried to do it because they're so tight lipped about this, but I really think that does make a difference in, you know, and helping uh, a career coordinator uh, adjust and adapt to, you know, the head coaching job. There's a lot of stuff. That you know, a lot of pieces that have to fit into the puzzle, and and I think it could be a little bit overwhelming. So, you know, I don't know if if what he said means that we're doing that now, but uh, I mean that's what he's going through now. But uh, boy, this is going to be interesting. It really is. Then let me ask it uh, this way: If you think that this staff, and it's easy enough to see, is underexperienced, that it is as young as it is, that guys only have so many years logged in the league as any kind of coaches, as a group, I think that's quite accurate. Are they the kind of group that will learn? Because if they're overmatched to begin with, that's fine. You learn on the job training kind of stinks. And yeah, maybe the Eagles are one and four, one and five, because in addition to not having enough talent, they also have a somewhat inexperienced coaching staff. Are they the kind of staff who will learn from it? Okay, we didn't know that. We hadn't figured out how that. We didn't think it out ahead of time. But next time, yeah, we'll have an answer for that. We'll have a uh, a different direction to go. Are they that kind of team that, okay, yeah, you're going to pay a price early, but you can actually cash a check later on with this group? It's still still a big TBD. And, uh, and uh, by the way, Jody, if they don't win that opener in Atlanta, they could start 0-9. <laughs> you look at that schedule. Oh. I mean, Whoa. if they don't win that opener, they are in trouble. Yeah, but well. Oh, and nine. We won't know. You got them going Whoa. 0 and 9, Gross. If they don't win the opener, yeah, I can see this snowball. <laughs> oh, but, man. But look at, look at all the dynamics. You got 17 games this year. <laughs> that That's a new adventure. Yeah. You got your preseason games. Nobody wants to play. They, they, they'll figure that out somehow. But that's a lot of games for a new staff. And, I mean, who's going to tell them what to do? I mean, is it going to be, is he going to call up Frank Reich every weekend or text him? You know, you, you can't do that. <laughs> He's got, Frank's got a team to coach. Is he going to get it from Howie? I don't think so. 
Is he, he going to get it from? He might yeah, get I it mean, from Jeff. I, I, this is, and I've, I've said this before too. Th this year, and uh, Jody, you made a good point. This is a culture building year for this team. Th this is where they just got to lay down their philosophy and, and find the guys that want to buy in. But all that said, um, you know, this, this optimism that I'm hearing because they play in the NFC East is, uh, th th it's just unfounded. It kind of, this is going to be a difficult whoa, year. Whoa, 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 hold on. W weren't they still in the mix in week 15 last week? As putrid yeah. as they were, as putrid as they finished, with two weeks to play, they were actually you're, still in the division. Like so you you're can like make boss, that Jody. argument again this year. It's the same thing. The division stinks on ice. You're <laughs> like my boss. He called the NFC East the competitive division. Give me a break. It was. It oh, was. for God's sakes, yeah. Competitively I, I awful, that. but competitive. All right. And, and Bob, you don't, yeah, Bob okay. if you're going – if you're going 0 and 9 to start, <laughs> if they don't win that opener, yeah, it's going to be I'm tough. Gonna, I'm going to sit here and guarantee that Jalen Hurts is one and done as the starting quarterback. Uh, uh, yeah. If they're if they're evaluating Jalen Hurts, is is there any way they can be fair about it with this season? If you're talking about a team with so many issues, a young coaching staff, maybe not the best talent in the world, how can you fairly evaluate the quarterback? Is that even got, possible? Yeah, no, yeah, you've got a lot of issues too. Still, I mean, Jeff Stoutland is is satisfied. He's he's comfortable that these veteran offensive linemen are going to be okay. Uh, I'm not. I, I I guess I'm a little pessimistic about that because they they've broken down in the past. Yeah, and and uh, you know the offense. I, I got to say the uh, the first round pick uh, Devontae Smith. I mean, he you can't tell much from from OTAs and stuff, except that this guy looks really smooth and polished. Yeah, and I, I'm, you know, I, I gotta say, you know, like he could end up being the best guy on this team this year. So, so you have that, you got a running back situation that that's pretty good, but there's too many ifs. If, if the offensive line stays well and, and I mean, if they stay healthy and, and Jalen hurts, um, you know, we, we saw what he did behind a, a, a patchwork type of, offensive line last year um a lot of throwaways and uh and i i was optimistic about him last year and i thought maybe this guy could be he could be the one but uh you know after after taking another look at that and uh even even going back and looking at some of the games I, i'm not so sure now so um so you know they got those first round picks in 2022 they're stockpiling those um of course, Des Deshaun Watson wants to go to Denver now, right? <laughs> Is that that's his preferred destination. So that maybe they could do something with a with an established guy. Is is what I'm thinking. But uh, then again, who who wants to come to Philly right now? Yeah. I mean, I, it was, seriously, Nick Sirianni couldn't get uh, the quarter. Who was his quarterback? Uh, Jacoby Brissett. He couldn't get him to come to Philly. You know, he went to Miami, yeah. and I, and I, you know, they coached the guy for a few years. I, I'm sorry. I mean. Philadelphia right now is the place where a career could could die. So <laughs> they got to establish they got to establish this culture and hope that it sticks. And, and let's not forget either. And this is not a, a slight against Nick Sirianni. I mean, a lot of a lot of guys that are relatively anonymous or obscure come out and they have great years. It, it happens. But he was pretty far down on this list. So uh, I, I, you know, I, I, guys weren't beating down the door to. To, to take this Eagles job. I mean, there were some some pretty good guys that uh, that interviewed, but people weren't beating down the door to, to be part of this. No, well, that part's then... changed because, Bob, I mean, look, if, if Nick Sirianni, you're, you're talking about 0-9, so let's flip it. And I've said this before. The Kansas City Chiefs come in like week four. That's, uh, I think, somewhere in October, maybe week four. Oh, that, that, that could be the win, yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying though, you know, the chiefs are talking about 20, and know, granted, this is, a, it's not going to happen, but the Eagles upset the Kansas city chiefs, but they do it in the wrong way. Miles Sanders runs for 150 yards. Jalen hurts runs for another hundred yards. Is Jeffrey Lurie going into Nick Sirianni's office after the game and saying, why didn't you throw the ball? I, I, I mean, that's what he did to Doug. Yeah, I think that happens every week, and uh, I and I think it happens with a lot of teams. Management gets in there; they want to see the game plan, and maybe approve 
is the wrong word, but they want to see the game plan before the game. I know that happened in Cleveland, and there was a big controversy about that, and it ended up with the the Browns totally denying it. But uh, they wanted to see game plans and and uh, before the game, or they at least took a look at them and uh, and they evaluated them with them after the game. And I'm I'm almost certain based on the stuff that happened with Doug that it happened with the Eagles too. So. And I would hate to be the, the football guy going in there telling them why I went for it on fourth down, you know, and or, or why I threw what why I ran a, this play or that play on fourth down. I, I think that I, I think that happens a lot in the NFL. I, I don't think it happens in New England with with Belichick, um, but I, I think it happens with with less established guys. And uh, there's a lot, you know, this accountability thing. Um, the front offices are, are heavily involved, I think, now with with the coaching end of it in, in terms of uh, looking at these plays and knowing that they have other eyes watching them, you know, at all times. Bob, you said earlier that uh, on 2020 hindsight, looking back even further on the Eagles quarterback, Jalen Hurts. What in particular jumped up to you, whether it's either going back and rewatching the games or rechecking the stats? What was it that jumped out to you that you said, yeah, but, uh, yeah. My daughter, yeah, but, what was it you didn't like about Jalen Hurts in the uh, four or the three plus games that he played in? And still, I'm sorry, we didn't yeah. need to see the uh, the end of the Nate Sudfeld era, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, Jalen Hurts, what was it on second peak that you thought, yeah, this might not be good enough? Can I say phenomenal question? Good question. Great yes. question. Now yes. I get it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Ding, ding, All right. ding. That okay. one hit okay. home. I got it. Yeah. Well, you know, I always liked the way that he threw the ball, but it, it was the way that he threw the ball. I just saw a lot of different launch angles and stuff. And um, I, I saw, you know, there'd be a good throw one time, but th there wasn't that consistency. And there was some pressure in that. And uh, just, just watching these OTAs, it, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. And it, and it made me go back and look at it a little bit more. I, I don't know if he's the guy that, uh, you know, they, they are going to throw the ball a lot. I, I You know, there, I, there's no question in my mind. I don't know if he's the guy you want throwing the ball a lot. I, I really do like his instincts as a quarterback, you know, not just as a as a, a guy who can imp, impro, improvise and, and that type of thing. But uh, I think it's it, it's that. And, um, and I know there's a lot of people that will, disagree with me about that I I just don't but I but I don't like um I, I don't like the consistency just just with throwing the ball it's a lot of different things I think he's still a work in progress along those lines so you know having asking you know somebody to, to correct all that in one year to me is uh that, that that's too much to ask so uh so I I think it's you know you, you're gonna have um you're gonna have some turnovers and stuff because of that but uh and, you know, watching Jody, watching uh, him throw and watching Flacco throw and Flacco's got a he's got a, a nice tight spiral on that. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's just so different. And, and that again, that doesn't mean I mean, there's some guys that have succeeded that don't throw spirals. Let's be honest about that. But uh, I, I just wonder, you know, if if this is the guy that that you want right now, um, I used to think that. Um, you know, he hit all when you put the all the the items in him, put all the parts of his, of the package in there. He's a great guy, and and there's no question too that he's really tight with the players. He he bonds with those guys, and uh, and that's that might be his biggest strength right now is getting everybody on the same page, and that can go a long way. But uh, but I wonder about that uh, the the consistency throwing the ball. That's the big question to me. Yeah, and that, Bob, that's one of the things we can see at OTAs, the mechanics, the footwork, and, and those guys working off to the side. You can see the consistency with Joe Flacco. You can't see the consistency from rep to rep with Jalen Hurts. I think that's a fair criticism. I go, but We go back to John DiPolippo. You go back way longer. But John was so good at drilling mechanics into Carson Wentz, and then when he was gone – all of a sudden those mechanics start to slip and the play starts to slip and, and people look across the league and they say, Patrick Mahomes, he doesn't do it mechanically sound. He's a superstar, but not everybody has Patrick Mahomes talent to overcome that lack of mechanics. Is that the bigger concern with Jalen Hurts? Just the fundamentals. 
That that's a big part of it. And and um, you know, Mahomes, even when he's off balance, he still yeah. throws it off balance the same way just yeah. about every time. I mean, it's uh but uh you know, that's not to compare him to, to Jalen Hurts, but um yeah, I, I just I, I wonder about that that whole thing. And um and you know if they if they get off to a rough start, you know, the worst thing they could do, I think, would be to 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 put the the veteran in there because um you, you need to you need to find unless they unless they determine during that really rough start that you know this is not going to be the guy that that would be tough um so um but um i, I yeah i th- this team is um it, it's just a long way away and uh, and i understand i appreciate what you say jody about the nfcs but but i think they all got better and uh, and I, and jody i you know that trade the eagles made with the cowboys to get Devontae smith to move ahead of the giants that that tells me that the the Cowboys see the Giants as a bigger threat than the Eagles. They, it's like we're we're not worried at all about the Eagles. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll let them have their guy, and yeah, we'll we'll get a pick for it too. But uh, you know, they they kind of blocked the Giants on that one, and I I think the Giants are going to be good too. And and by the way, you can't tell me as uh, as mediocre as he was in Dallas, you can't tell me that Jason Garrett didn't help out. Joe Judge last year, and then that wasn't a big help. Knowing the NFC East and that, so it, it's going to be a, a real learning experience. I, and let me just say this too: one thing about a younger staff, and I've criticized the Eagles in the past, the Doug Peterson era. They have not developed young guys, and some of these guys have have flourished with other teams. So maybe this younger coaching staff can do that. If they do that, if they can establish a culture and develop some guys in this year, it'll be a success. Who are those young guys that they they didn't develop but went elsewhere and were developed into players? What, what was that cornerback? Yeah, what, what was that cornerback who went to uh, Jacksonville? Sidney Jones. Yeah, and, and okay. he got and, and you know even even uh, you look at a Nelson Aguilar or something. He had a good year that Super Bowl. Very year. good year. Yeah, he had look a very at a good look, year with the Raiders. Right, right. and uh, and he was. I, you look at the Super Bowl too, John. I, I watched rewatched that a few times. Yeah. That, he was good in that game. I mean, he, was he really great. helped him. This, that yeah, was his I best mean, game, the Super Bowl. And but there, there's guys like that. You know, there's situations like that. There, there have been uh, some other players, some uh, some defensive guys. Well, you know, you know the linebackers. They got there's a guy with Baltimore who, who ended up Ford. ended yeah. up being a starter. Yeah, having being really good. So Russell Douglas played a yeah. little bit in Carolina. You played just don't than here. And some of this is situational, sure. But uh, Doug Peterson, to me, and, and and that coaching staff, and he didn't always have control over who was going to be in that room from from year to year. But that coaching staff uh, needed relied more on veterans, and uh, and uh, it didn't you take as much time to to develop the younger guys. And last year was a little bit of an anomaly, but it happened before last year when COVID was here. It, it, it was happening before that when they couldn't. When, where they yeah. couldn't actually work with the guys the way they did before. Then let me get you on the record for this one, since you're pointing out guys didn't get it done here for whatever reason, but went somewhere else and kicked their game up a couple notches. What kind of year is Carson Wentz going to have in Indianapolis? Oh, uh, that, that, uh, I, I don't think he's, <clears throat> Jody personally, I think he's going to get hurt. <laughs> I really, I, I, they got a good offensive line in that, but, uh, I'm put me in that in that body of people who think that he hasn't been the same guy since that knee injury. He, he that that doesn't mean he's been bad, but he does to me he does not move like that guy, you know, with since uh he had the knee injury, he does not move like that same guy. And last year uh, there were a lot of different factors, injuries with the offensive line and uh the receiver the receiving core was kind of was fairly new and and that didn't help, but uh you know the for him to come in there and uh, and to suddenly gel, I, I don't know. I I, I think I, I, all of that said, the Colts are a really good team, and that coach Frank Reich, if anybody can do it, it, it would be him. So, uh, so if the answer, if your question is, <laughs> do the Eagles get the first round pick? Yes, they probably <laughs> would because well, yeah. <laughs> They, they're going to get that conditional first round pick. Yeah, they, they probably will. Although I, I still think that, um, you know, I don't want to jinx the guy, but yeah, if you're I worried he's going to get hurt, that's yeah, going to be the there. reason the Eagles yeah. won't get the yeah. first round pick. Yeah, but you yeah. can't predict that per se. Yeah, you, you can't yeah. go in predicting that per se. 
if right. he stays healthy, the Eagles get the first round pick. Defensive side of the ball, Bob. What the heck are we going to see? What are we uh, going to see from from JG? JG, my buddy. What are we going to yeah. see from him? Yeah, you you are going to have um, Fletcher Cox with his hands on his hips, looking at the the secondary. <laughs> you know, <laughs> after after it gives up, you know, a big play after big play. I, I it doesn't matter. You you know, <laughs> you could have the best pass rush ever. And I don't think it's going to have to help the secondary. It's uh, there's a lot of holes back there. And uh, I, I don't see how you, you know, a new system, a lot of holes. I don't see how you can patch that up. Look in the NFC East alone. And uh, there's some really good receivers there. It, it, that's going to oh, be, yeah, yeah that, that's going to be challenging. And uh, the linebackers uh, from, from what I understand and, and, you know, from, you know, just from, and it's not from Nick Sirianni or his staff. They're going to be doing that A-gap blitz stuff, right, John? Yeah. That, that yep. Uh, Minnesota did. I mean, good luck learning that this year. <laughs> that, that, that is a really complicated scheme. Uh, well, I mean, it's complicated to do it the right way. I mean, it, it's difficult to do it the right way. So uh, I, I think defensively um, they're going to have some issues. And, and you also, you got some age on that defensive line, too. Um, you know, Brandon Graham and, and Fletcher Cox are not young guys. Um, Kerrigan, good rotation guy. They got a bunch of rotation guys for the most part. So, and, uh, they did draft a young defensive tackle. Who's huge. This guy from SC, this guy is absolutely huge. So that should help. But, uh, I, I don't see, um, I don't see them really addressing or being able to stop too much on the back end right now. But, Bob, the good news is Zach Ertz is still here. We're, <laughs> we're waiting every day. Today's the day that Zach Ertz becomes an ex-Eagle. Wrong! Yeah. Another Jody. day that Zach Ertz is still here. Come on, he's going to have a big year. Catch 80 balls for the Eagles. Yeah, well, they're going to need to, to score some points for sure. But I, I just, uh, the more I look at this thing with Zach Ertz, at first I, I thought, yeah, okay, trade him. You know, get something for him. Um you're not going to get much for him at this point. And, and he's done a lot. He's done a lot for this, this Eagles team. I, just give the guy his release. It's after June 1st. Um, uh, what are you going to do with a, a, th- a third pick, day pick, uh, even if it's conditional? I mean, let the guy go. Um, they, they let Malcolm Jenkins go. They've let other guys go that, that have said yeah. they're, they're not going to play, you know, if their contract's not redone and, and that type of thing. And, and that's not exactly what Ertz said. He was unhappy with the the, the uh, offer, so let the guy go, move on. Why why let this fester? You're not making an example of anything. Get this culture going, you know. Get get it running and stuff. Just just let the man go and uh, and move on. How does that resonate in the locker room, Bob? If they don't, they're playing this game of chicken with Zach Ertz. They aren't. I mean, let's be honest. This guy's an all time franchise great. The other players look at that and say, why are they doing this to Zach? Why aren't they giving him his freedom like they gave Malcolm Jenkins? Why are they singling singling out this guy of all guys? Does that resonate at all? I, I don't think that does because uh, the veterans that are there, they, they know he's going to be gone. They're, they're not going to let Zach Ertz back in that locker room. Yeah. He's gonna, one way or the other, he's, he's not going to be there for training camp. So, uh, so I don't think it does. I think it it's kind of – you know, a little bit of uh, the the Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey type of thing. They they know that the the writing is on the wall, and uh, and I the, he won't be there for training camp. But uh, you know why why just uh, why prolong this? And uh, if they're waiting for an injury, you know, to uh, to another for another team. I mean, you you get lucky once in a while, like they did with Sam Bradford. You know, I mean, with Minnesota when yeah. uh, they traded. Yeah. That doesn't happen too often. So uh, we're, we're something where so, a liability turns into an asset. I got to ask you about this, Bob, because John and I were discussing it before we punched you up. And I know we're probably making a mountain out of a molehill or a molehill out of a mountain. Um, the quarterback three position for the Eagles. They cut Jamie Newman this week. They now only have two quarterbacks on their roster. I guarantee you they're the only team in the NFL that today, as we sit here, has only two quarterbacks on their roster. So they're going to add somebody else. Or are they? Uh, I saw this from Nikki Blackburn on our stream here. How about Greg Ward as QB3? <laughs> well, he's the, emer- 
he definitely yeah. is the emergency guy. Yeah, he would yeah. be the emergency guy. So, um, yeah, I, uh, to me, not not as much of a big deal. They are going to need a camp arm, May, maybe even two, yeah. Um, yeah. with the with the three game preseason. So they, they they'll get somebody. Um, I don't think it's a big issue. And I did hear you guys talking about you know if they thought it was if they thought it was that big of a deal, they would have drafted somebody. Yeah, but right now their track record drafting. A quarterback when they already have a, a young guy in there has not been good. So Clayton um, Thorson, come on, Ron. yeah, come on, yeah. But the, the like current that. starting quarterback fits yeah. that bill. Yeah, yeah. they already I had like, Carson Wentz and they took uh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, well, I like last Clinton one Thorson. was a hit at least yeah. in my book. All right, Bob. Yeah. Last one from me. By the way, this has been a phenomenal spot. So we want oh, to thank phenomenal. Bob. Chris. Bob Groats for stopping a, a, by. A great job, a really good job. Yeah, really, Thanks. really great, really good. I'll stop with that, guys. Yeah. You know, the Eagles want to be so innovative all the time. They cut. They not only cut Jamie Newman, Bob. They cut Khalil Tate. They missed an opportunity. We just talked about Greg Ward playing quarterback. Tyree Jackson is here, the ex quarterback from Buffalo. They could have had the first five quarterback offense in the history of the NFL. How was that for innovative? Wow, that would that would have kept him guessing, huh? Yeah. Can you imagine explaining that to Howie? <laughs> the game plan with that? Yeah. No, not not Howie. Yeah. Jeffrey. Yeah. The bigger yeah. problem would be Jeffrey. I think but they would have liked that. Jeffrey might I like it, yes, because you have it. that many more chances to pass the football. Yeah. I don't care who throws it as long as we're throwing it. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. But, you know, Nick has a – I got to say this about Nick Sirianni, too. He has a way of going off on a tangent. You know, I used to have oh. teachers like that. When I went to Temple – I had a teacher, Jackie Steck, who would tell the most interesting stories, you know, and we'd be spellbound during that class. But uh, Nick has a way of going off, too. But, you know, to, to say I'm spellbound right now, no, I'm well, not. I, I, I want an answer. Yeah. We <laughs> promise not to tell anybody that you said the Eagles could go 0 and 9. If they don't win that you opener. Miss that. 0 and 9, Bob Groves yeah. said is a positive. I, I said, yeah, if they don't win that opener in Atlanta, it's going to be tough. And I, I thought I was pessimistic. I'm going to guarantee right here the Eagles don't go 0 and 9. I'm going to guarantee right. it. I'm going to guarantee it. The power of positivity, uh, Johnny. <laughs> all right, uh, Bob, great having you on. Now that we know you got the computer all hooked up, we'll try not to do it on a cloudy or a rainy day because we know you're out there in the boonies of Westchester. Uh, we are going to call again. We are going to punch up again uh, well before the Eagles go 0 and 9. Uh, all thanks. right. All right, Thanks I'll for hopping on with us today, buddy. I, is... I want you to call me when they're 0 and 8. <laughs> That's a gap. If the Eagles are 0 and 8, we will have you co host. I'll 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 take off. I'll hey. take the week off. You and McMullen could do the entire week leading up to that week nine game. Yeah, they could still win that opener. I mean, Atlanta's they're rebuilding too. So yeah. Yeah. I could be off the hook right away. All Bobby right, I'll G, see you guys. Good All stuff. Always a pleasure. Buddy. Appreciate Thanks, it. Bob. That's Bob Groats for the Delaware County time. Holy mackerel. Oh, at nine. Oh. McMullen, forget about any of the criticism you've been taking yeah. because you're not blowing smoke up the Eagles fans. You know what? Uh, Groats has gotten the new title, the crown of the pessimistic Eagles media member with a potential 0 and 9 start here. Well, that's he has why I like thrown Bob. you as yeah. negative Nelly covering yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I like anyone. I like Bob. I like Jeff McClain. I like anybody who's honest. And, uh, you know, if you think they stink, say they stink. We're not going to say, I, I can tell you this, I say all the time. You were talking about cornerbacks before we got Bob on. We'll talk about that more after the break. But, um, look, they stink at cornerback right now. Zach McPherson can't play outside corner in the NFL as a rookie. Anybody who's telling you that is lying to you. Uh, it's going to be ugly if they're forced down that road. And as I said, just go back during the break. I'll look it up. I'll tell you the cornerbacks in the top of the draft last year, the Jeffrey Okudas of the world, the third overall pick in the draft, who was awful in his first time in the NFL. Maybe he turns it around. That's the third pick in the draft. And people are saying, hey, maybe Zach McPherson can do it. No, Zach McPherson can't do it. That's the kind of stuff I'm going to tell you the truth about. Bob is telling you 0-9. Even I'm not going down that road. 
I, I think your point about uh, cornerbacks need time for development. We always talk about whether quarterbacks can come right in and play as rookies and how difficult it is, and it's better to give them a learning curve. And a, You're right about cornerbacks. That's a tough oh. position oh. in the NFL to step in and be able to play right away. And, yes, the Eagles may be leaning on a fourth, fourth-round draft pick to play some significant snaps for them this year. Maybe that coach guy is on to something. No, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm not going that negative. He's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. We are your Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.